Hey guys, so today we're checking out the PowerStop OE Replacement 6 Lug Brake Rotor and Pad Kit for the front and the rear, fitting all 2005 and newer 6 Lug Toyota Tacomas. Now maintenance is expected out of every vehicle and the Tacoma is no exception. And this set of brakes will be for you if you're in search of a more budget friendly choice for a full brake kit. Now even though this is an OE style setup, this will still increase your stopping power compared to your stock brakes, which will be great if you're looking for some better performance than your factory ones. Now, this will also keep it pretty simple and to the point with quality components, but won't necessarily break the bank in comparison to a high performance kit. Now this kit will include one piece blank face Vented rotor is made from a G3000 casting construction, being very durable, resisting any cracking, while also having the proper cooling. This will also come with Z17 ceramic compound brake pads that will have low dust and very minimal noise for the Tacoma owner who's looking for very little cleanup when it comes to brake dust and similar qualities compared to the factory components. Not to mention, this is going to be a direct fit replacement coming with everything that you need uh, in the kit, including all the springs, pins, clips, and all the hardware, so there's no question about it when it comes to fitment. Now, when it comes to price, this will come in at roughly $450, making this more of an affordable choice for a full kit. Now, a lot of other options on the page that you'll usually see are separated between the front or the back, or they're going to be a more high-performance choice. Now, you will see kits that will come with drilled and slotted rotors, as well as high-performance brake pads. Now, some of those high-performance kits will be good if you're really working your brakes hard, if you're taking your Tacoma off-road and wheeling it pretty hard, um, or you're hitting higher speeds a little bit more often than daily driving. However, if you are daily driving your truck, you aren't constantly working your brakes in off-road situations, then this is going to be a great kit to choose. Now, when it comes to install, this will be a two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, taking you about four hours to get the job done with the right hand tools. And one of our installers here is gonna show you how to get that process done step-by-step. Step. So that's gonna wrap it up for my review. Let's go ahead and get into the install. Tools required for this install include an impact gun, a couple different size ratchets, pliers, needle nose pliers, and diagonal cutters, a couple flathead screwdrivers, a 21, 19, 17, 13, and 12 millimeter sockets, an adjustment tool, our spring clip remover tool, a caliper hanger or a bungee cord, brake lube, anti-seize, and a caliper piston compressor tool. What's up guys? Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to replace your brakes on your Tacoma, so let's get started. So our first step is going to be to remove our wheels. Now factory lug nuts are going to be a 21 millimeter. However, we have some aftermarket ones, so I'm going to be using a 19 with our spline key. And now with our lug nuts removed, we can remove our wheel. and then we'll repeat that same process for our other three. So now that we have our wheel removed, we can go ahead and disconnect our brake line bracket. It's gonna be a 12 millimeter bolt. I'll get a 12 millimeter socket on and get that out. Now I'll come in, I'll get my 12 millimeter on our bolt and then we can remove it. Now we'll wiggle our bracket out and I'm just gonna throw our bolt in just so we don't lose it. So now we can come down to our caliper and we have this clip back here that we're gonna have to remove. Now this is just gonna slide out of our pins. So you can get your finger in there. And it'll come out just like that. So now we're gonna be working on our bottom clip here. So I'm gonna grab a pair of needle nose pliers and we're gonna pop out the clip from our brake pad on either side and then we can slide out our pins and remove that. So now we can go ahead and remove our two pins. Now these you can kind of press out from the back, but if yours are stuck in there, you can tap it with a hammer on the back side. Now I'm just gonna push on the back with my finger and that'll pop right out and then we can remove our clip with it. And we'll do the same on the top. So now we can go ahead and remove our brake pads. So we're gonna have to compress the piston outward 
So a trick I've learned to do this is you can take a pair of needle nose pliers, put them on the edge of our brake pads, and pry them apart at the top and bottom, and it'll push our piston in enough for us to get our pads out. And that'll give us enough clearance to wiggle out our brake pads. So now we can go ahead and remove our two 17 millimeter bolts that are holding our caliper in place. Now you're gonna to wanna to get yourself a hanger or a bungee cord so that we can hang our caliper up and not put any pressure on our brake line. So we'll get our 17 millimeter socket on these bolts. And then we'll get our top one. Now we'll get our caliper hanger, slide it through one of our holes. and then we can hang it up on the body. So now we're ready to remove our rotor. Now if you're lucky, it'll just slide right off, but if you live in a place with a lot of rust, you can go ahead and get yourself an M8 by 1.25 bolt, and that'll thread right into this hole or this hole, and then you'll just tighten it down and it'll push the rotor away from the hub. Or if you're not gonna be reusing your rotors, you can just hit it with a hammer until it pops loose. So now we're ready to install our rotor. Before we mount this up to the hub, we're gonna go ahead and put some anti-seize on the inside. That way, when we go to change our brakes the next time, our rotor won't stick to our hub as easily. So we'll just get a little dab. Then we'll throw our rotor on and we'll throw a couple lug nuts on to hold that into place. So now before we reinstall our caliper, we have to compress our pistons to make room for our new pads. Now we did a pretty good job of that with our needle nose pliers earlier, but if you need some extra space, we can throw our brake pads back into our caliper. And then you can get a spreader tool like this one. We'll put it in between our brake pads and then just crank it round and round until it compresses all the way out. So now we can reinstall our caliper. So we'll pull it off our hanger. Put it back into position and we'll reinstall our 17 millimeter bolts. And then I'll get my 17 millimeter socket to tighten these down. So 
So now we're ready to install our brake pads. Now the pad with the little piece of metal, this is the wear indicator, that's gonna go on the back side. And then the piece without that piece of metal, it's gonna go on our front side. Now on the back, we can go ahead and lubricate our shims here, and then we can get these installed into our caliper. So now normally our next step would be to clean up our factory pins with a wire brush, but our kit comes with new pins, so we're going to be sliding these through, and then we have cotter pins on the back that will slide through the other side of our pin. Now our bottom pin is going to be a little bit different so we have to reinstall our clip at the bottom. Now you do get a new clip in this kit. So this middle portion is slightly angled towards the front. You want to make sure it lines up towards the front, otherwise it's going to be making contact with your rotor. So we'll slide that into place. Our pin is going to go through this bottom groove here. And then we'll get another cotter pin for our backside. So now on the 90 degree angle part of our clip, we're going to be grabbing those with some needle nose pliers and putting them into the holes in our brake pads. And now lastly, we can come back and remove that 12 millimeter bolt that we had in place. And then we can reattach our brake line bracket. Now we'll get a 12 millimeter socket on a ratchet to tighten that down. Now with everything tightened back up, we can repeat the same process on the other side. So now coming to the back, once we have our wheel off, our next step is going to be to remove our drum. Now you might be able to wiggle it out of there. If not, you can hit it with a hammer if you're not going to be reusing it. Or we have these two threaded holes that take an M8 bolt that you can screw into and it'll push the drum outward. So now we're going to use the bolt method, so we'll thread our M8 bolt into our two holes. And I'll take a 13 millimeter socket and we're just gonna tighten down evenly. So now before we get in here and start taking things apart, it would be a good idea to take some pictures from all the different angles so you know how it goes back together. Or you could leave the other side assembled so that you have kind of a template to go off of. So first we're going to be removing our longer lower spring. So we can get in there with a pair of diagonal cutters, grab on, and we'll pull it around to unhook it.
So next we're gonna be tackling the spring on the left side. It's gonna be right above that spring that we just took off here. So we'll do the same thing, get in there with diagonal cutters and pop our spring out. So now we can go ahead and remove our top spring right underneath of our cylinder. So we'll grab our diagonal cutters, grab on and pull this out. So now we can come to the bottom and disconnect our e-brake bracket. You can just pull out on that. Now we can remove our spring clip on our left side. So you can get a spring clip tool at your local auto parts store. We'll push that down, grab the pin in the back. And we'll just twist that off. And then we can pull our pin out of the way, and slide our first hat out, and unhook it from our clip at the bottom. So now we can go ahead and fully remove our spring at the bottom. And then we can tackle our next spring clip on the right side. So we'll get our spring clip tool once again, grab the pin on the back side, twist that off. We'll pull our pin out and we can slide out our shoe and our assembly. So now with our shoe removed, we can disconnect our e-brake cable so we can pull back on our spring and slide that out. So now with our shoes removed, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and transfer our brackets. So we have these two horseshoe clips that we can get a flathead screwdriver on and pop those off. And then we can get that bracket onto our new one. And now with our clips removed, we can remove our two brackets. And then we can remove our spring, pop right out of that hole for us. So now we can assemble our new adjuster and spring. So we can slide this piece off and then we'll be untwisting this. And then on our new spring, we'll match it up to the orientation of our old one slide our first piece through and then screw this back in. And we'll install our other side once again and we can get this on our new shoe. So now we can take our adjuster. This notch is going to slide into this notch here and then we'll slide the end of our spring into the third hole from the top. And then we can take our brackets. The one with this post is gonna go on the underside. And then our other one is gonna go on the top. So now that we have our brackets reinstalled, we can install our horseshoe clips. That's just gonna slide right over the post. And then we'll take a pair of diagonal cutters to close up our other side. So now we can do the same thing for our top post. Slide our clip into place. And we'll grab pliers on one side. And 
And now with our brackets reinstalled, we can get this back on the truck. So now we can reconnect our e-brake line. That's gonna slide right in this little groove here. You might wanna get yourself an extra set of hands for this. It's a little tough to do just by yourself. But we're gonna be pulling back on our spring here and then sliding that into this groove. So now we're gonna be installing our spring clips so we can slide our shoe into place. And then there's gonna be a hole on the back side here that we can slide our pin through just like earlier when we took it out. Then we can slide our spring over and our clip And then you're gonna to wanna to push that down and twist on it. Once again, you can use your tool. It's a little harder putting it back on, but you just push in, twist it until it locks into place. So now we're gonna be looking at our two smaller springs. The one with the longer coil is gonna go on the bottom of our shoe. We're just gonna hook it and let it hang for now. And then we can get our other side shoe and our bracket we're gonna slide this hole over our post. And then the inside of the fork on our adjuster is gonna slide into this groove and over our silver tab back here. And then once again, we can take our rod and stick that through our backside. And then we'll get our spring clamp, slide that over, put some pressure, and twist it to lock it into place. So now we can connect our bottom spring. The spring's gonna go underneath this black tab here. So I'm gonna grab a pair of diagonal cutters, grip onto the other end, and slide it into our groove here. Now we can grab our orange spring and connect it into this hole down here. We'll grab those diagonal cutters once again. So now we can reinstall our lower bracket. These two teeth are gonna slide in here and then our hole is gonna go over this mounting provision here. So now we can install our white spring on the bottom. So it's gonna hook into our bracket right here and then wrap around our post here. So now we can take our yellow spring. We're gonna be hooking that onto the edge of our silver bracket. So now we can grab the other end of our spring and we're gonna stretch it into this hole. It's gonna be the second under our spring clamp.
So now with all of our springs locked into place, we can go ahead and install our drum. Now we can throw a couple lug nuts on half tight just to hold it in place for us. And then now we can repeat that same process on the other side. So now that we have both sides done, we can go ahead and adjust our shoes to have a little bit of drag on our drum. So now coming to the back of our drum, we have this little grommet that we can just pop out. And now inside, we can take our adjustment tool and we're just gonna feel around until we can feel the grooves. And then these clicks are gonna be that gear turning. It's gonna push out our shoes. And then you can feel on the drum. And now we have some drag, so we know we're good. We can put our grommet back into place and do the other side. So that'll wrap up this review and install of the PowerStop OE replacement six lug brake rotor and pad kit for the front and rear of your 2005 to current Tacoma. Thank you for watching, and remember for all things Tacoma, keep it right here at extremeterrain.com.